Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Even though the weather is rather wet outside and, uh, and it's damp and it's cool and it's overcast, this is a bright day. It's a joyous day. It is the day of illumination. It is the day of lights. In Greek, we call it tafota. It is a day that we rejoice and we give thanks to God for his mercies and his blessings and the gift of new life. There are many themes that run through the services for these days as we celebrate the baptism of our Lord. <clears throat> Illumination, regeneration, revelation. The icon, the very beautiful icon of the many beautiful icons in the church of the baptism of our Lord shows really fully all the details of the baptism. John is baptizing in the Jordan. The Lord comes to be baptized. He begins his ministry. It was really recently, I'd never read it before. It struck me. It's from St. Cyril of Alexandria who calls this the beginning. This was the beginning of our Lord's public ministry, the beginning of the beginning. The beginning of his ministry, the beginning of our salvation. <clears throat> In the beginning were the waters God, that covered the earth at the creation. And now we have Christ at the Jordan. <clears throat> Excuse me. Those waters which are vital to life and light which is vital to light. The light comes into the world, the light of the world, who is Christ himself. God condescends, we we'll use that term over and over again, to be baptized. He comes to the Jordan and John says, I need to be baptized by you. Not I to baptize, not you. I need to be baptized by you, not I, that I baptize you. He says, let it be now to fulfill all righteousness. Why did our Lord do all of these things exactly to fulfill all righteousness? He took on all of our humanity, became a true human being without, without ever ceasing, of course, to be God at the same time. A great mystery. And not a mystery in the sense of <clears throat> trying to figure out who did it, but a mystery in the sense that it goes beyond our understanding our comprehension, our mental abilities to understand. It remains a mystery and something that we comprehend and understand, however, by faith. God comes to us to save us. He created us. He created us for life, life eternal. He put us in paradise. We lost that paradise by our own sin and transgression. We find ourselves in a state of mortality, of death, of division, transgression, alienation, separation from God. And after a long period of preparation that we read about in the Old Testament, God sent his only son into the world to be the savior of the world. Jesus named at his birth, which means savior. The Christ, the anointed one, the one anticipated, anointed by God. And he comes to the Jordan to begin his public ministry now. In fact, in the early church, this was the main feast that celebrated that around the, our Lord's, and, and included the remembrance of his birth, circumcision, which we've already celebrated, and then the beginning of his public ministry. And he comes to fulfill all righteousness. <clears throat> and though he does not need to be baptized, he is baptized so that by cleansing the waters, because he didn't enter the waters to be cleansed, but to cleanse them, and they become now a vehicle of new life and the transmission of God's grace to us. 
in a sense, a source of prefigurement of his own death and resurrection, and that is the symbolism of baptism, is it not? We are immersed in the waters, we die to the old self, to the old man, to the old person, to the old selfish self, and we arise as a new person, new in Christ. All of you who have been baptized into Christ have been clothed in Christ, we just say. Alleluia. And the Lord, in anticipation of our own baptism, is baptized. So therefore, our baptism has real meaning. It's not simply an outward cleansing, a symbolic of, a, of cleansing and of a new beginning, but a real change in who we are. We continue to be the same person and appear to everyone to be the same person, and yet we are not. We have become something radically new. We have been clothed in Jesus Christ. We have become children of God. Our Lord was baptized, the Spirit descended in the form of a dove, which reminds, me of, which reminds us rather why the dove it was the dove that appeared, right, in, in the Old Testament after the flood that brought the twig of an olive branch in its beak to, Mo, to, to Noah to indicate that the flood waters had begun to recede, that there was now peace again with, between us. And the dove is the symbol of peace. The Holy Spirit de descends. The Holy Spirit is not a dove, by the way. It symbolically descends in the form of a dove. And the voice of God the Father is heard, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. He declares him, or rather reveals to us that Jesus Christ is truly the Son of the Father. He doesn't become the Son at that point. He simply reveals as a Son. We, when we are baptized, become truly children, sons and daughters of the Father. What a great privilege we have. Not only, a, I think that's even an inadequate word. It's a gift beyond description of new life that we have received. We have a new relationship with God. In the midst of the chaos of life itself, in the midst of suffering and of death and of sickness, and of many times the mysteries of life itself and why things happen as they happen. We have hope, we have meaning, we have purpose because God has shown us that purpose and he has come into the midst of our sufferings and that chaos and taken upon himself and therefore given meaning to our lives. Regardless of what we suffer, and sometimes we don't, we don't know the answers. We don't know why. And we struggle, and we wonder, and we possibly doubt at times. And yet, and the answer is not some philosophical answer. God is not some high in the sky. It's not simply a belief in a teaching, but a belief in a person. God himself, in the person of his son, came to us to be with us. As we confess at Christmas, Emmanuel, God is with us. Methimon Theos. This is our hope. This is our faith. This is what we confess amongst many things as we celebrate this great feast of Epiphany. And in a while, be able to celebrate the blessing of the waters, which now have been blessed by Christ himself. We ask him to bless, send his Holy Spirit to bless them, to make them a vehicle of sanctification for us. So all of these things are remember today. Our own baptism, our own regeneration, our own illumination, the newness of life, the gift of life, and of salvation that we have received in Christ. That as we dedicate ourselves on this day, as we rejoice and we celebrate the giving and the receiving of light in Christ, let us rejoice in the new life that we have received and strive every day to be ever worthy of that gift.
by his grace and his love and his mercy. Amen. For God, you have visited our loneliness and mercy and compassion. You have set us, your lowly, sinful, and unworthy servants, to serve at your holy altar before your holy glory. Strengthen us for this service with the power of your Holy Spirit and grant speech to our lips that we may invoke the grace of your Holy Spirit upon the gifts that are about to be offered. And grant that always guarded by your power, we may give glory to you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Thank 
so forth, you can, when you have the you need know, to sacrifice, or to give a good offering, you need not be pleased. The sacrifice accepted with the rise of your spirit, that you will make us right by the Lord, and you will make us pleased. In my body, so you should also offer the first one. The excellent part of you, Μυστή κύριο στο Θεό, τη βασιλεία αυτού πάντοτε νύγκε αή, και ει του αιώνα των αιώνων. Με το Λόγο Γκάρτ, remember. Calves will be offered when you're offered. Let us complete our prayer to the Lord. For our deliverance from all. In wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for those who entered with faith, reverence, and godly fear, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have a mercy upon us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. For a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us ask the Lord. An angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask of the Lord. 
forgiveness of our sins and offenses that us ask of the Lord. Τα καλά και συμφέροντα τα σχετικά σήμαν και ειρήνη το κόσμο πάνω του Κυρίου εθισόμεθα. We may live out our lives in peace and repentance that us ask of the Lord. The Christian end to our lives, peaceful, free of shame and suffering, for a good defense before the judgment seat of Christ let us ask. Τη Παναγία σε χάνει, περιβλημένη σε δόξη τη πίνη μου Θεοτό, που και η Παρθένο Μαρία. Με τα πάντων των Αγίων μνημονεύσαντα, σε αυτού και αλληλού και πάσαν την ζωή νημών. Χριστό το Θεό παραθώ μετά. These gifts from the hands of our sinners that being genuinely worthy to serve at your holy altar without blame, we may obtain the reward of the faithful stewards and the fearful day of your just judgment. Through the mercies of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy, good, and life giving Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Yeah. 